Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Earthly Headlines. Today we're going to talk about Doggerland and um, some of the lands, the Stone Age lands that were submerged under the North Sea that connected Britain to uh, mainland uh, Europe. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, there's a few cool pictures here. Here's a rough image of some of the the rivers that, again, are hypothetical or hypothesized. And then you can see this part that's now submerged. And it's a pretty substantial size. Uh, it's like the size of the Netherlands, uh, Doggerland or the Dogger Hills. I think there's another. This is a more simplified map, but um, you, you kind of get the picture here that all this, once upon a time, was underneath a giant ice sheet about 20,000 years ago. And then everything uh, got submerged only, I think about eight to 10,000 years ago. So not that long ago. And th there's a bunch of 3D maps and a bunch of um, content about uh, Doggerland. And now they're starting to make strides in, in their research in terms of funding and um, their goals and basically everything's laid out for them and it's only a matter of time before they find something and they're pretty convinced that they're going to find all kinds of evidence of human settlement there although they haven't found any smoking gun yet this article uh, i'll have the I'll have the link in the description so a vast land area between england and southern scandinavia which was home to thousands of stone age settlers is about to be rediscovered expert scientists and archaeologists have spent the last 15 years meticulously ma mapping thousands of kilometers underwater in hope of unearthing lost pre prehistoric tribes the this area was discovered i guess there is uh, p the potential for this doggerland area was identified back in the 30s and uh just by chance i think there was like a fishing boat or something they found like a barbed antler point or something like that and they started dragging up a bunch of stuff the mammoth lion other animals and uh other tools weapons so that's why they know that there were pe there was some settlements there but they haven't found when i say smoking gun i mean like human corpse down there or something like that at least i don't think so because that hasn't been reported uh, in mainstream but uh what they decided to do since they found all this stuff since then they decided to map stuff out which is what they've been doing um and here's some more photos this is the ice sheet here this was a the last glacial maximum about twenty thousand years ago this is the greatest extent and you can see bas basically all of scotland parts of ireland and uh and britain and dog uh, half of doggerland was underneath or most of doggerland actually was underneath and you can see for reference there is uh some main cities here there's uh london berlin and amsterdam and uh, as you can see, 5,500 years ago, there was some sort of tsunami or some sort of seismic activity that that further submerged the area. And this area known as Dogger Bank has been known. It's been uh, marked in maps for a while. And here you can see the beginning of like the English Channel starting to form. And then here is basically what it looks like now. Um, this is a Viking bake, and then this is a shoal here, the Dogger Bank Shoal, which has been known about. And yeah, you can see that all this is fairly, fairly recent stuff that is mainly caused by this huge amount of meltwater at 20,000 years ago, or rather between 115,000 years is when it started forming all the way up until 10,000 BC is when it started to really melt. And that is probably because of... Uh, the Younger Dryas impact event, uh, among other things, but maybe a, a, a solar solar activity as well. What is it? Um, those those ejections from the uh, from the sun. So anyway, uh, I've talked about that at length. So yeah, they 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 meticulously mapped out uh, this underwater part. Again, the area was submerged when thousands of cubic miles of subarctic ice started to rise, uh, started to melt, and sea levels began to rise. Uh, c this place could have had great plains with rich soils formed an important land bridge between britain and northern europe and if they found weapons and tools then yeah there's definitely an established population there doing something and they they if they had rich soil and they're great plains i mean humans that's 
prime real estate for for settlers and if they had weapons back then too that's very interesting as well um i, I wonder uh what the exact dates are for those uh, using seabed mapping data, the team plans to produce a 3D chart revealing the rivers, lakes, hills, and coastlines of the country. And these are, again, more details that are possible, uh, more gaps that we can fill. And then once we have the lay of the land, so to speak, then we can start uh, forming more clear hypotheses about where people were living, what would have been um, like prime candidates in terms of location for, for the bigger settlements just based on... Uh, uh, human like resources that would have been there um, and all that stuff and then eventually they might even get like the biodiversity of the place which I think they've already started to um, they're gonna start taking core sediment samples from uh, certain areas to extract millions of fragments of DNA from buried plants and animals and yeah that's how they'll probably establish a biodiversity and uh, professor Vincent Gaffney he's a uh, uh, He's an archaeologist from uh, the University of Bradford, Forensic Sciences. If this is successful, it will be the first time anybody will have produced such evidence for settlements in the deep waters of the North Sea. This will be a real first. That would be new knowledge of what is really a lost continent. And I don't know if it's, it can be considered a continent, but it's definitely a country-sized a, a country amount of land that also, according to this uh, hypothetical landscape, it must have had a, at least a few uh, pretty significant rivers running through it. We can't walk those fields looking for pottery or stone fragments. We can't dig. We're going to drop grabs or do very small scale dredges to see if we can find these stones or tools to give us a clue as to what is there. So I think it's like a kind of like a game of claw almost because um, they can't do it themselves. Um, we were talking about an area that is the size of a modern European country and we know almost nothing about it. We've been preparing for this for a while. Uh, until sea levels rose at the end of the last ice age between 8,000 and 10,000 years ago. So this was the area that connected it. So yeah, the, um, it, it was gradually flooding, but I think it was completely submerged uh, a little bit later than this. But yeah, um, these these dates line, line up with the very least meltwater pulse 1B, uh, which was the second pulse of uh, uh, meltwater that fell into the, or that flooded the oceans. Um, so yeah, the dates line up with uh, the submergence of Doggerland, which is again one of many, many, many areas in which the coastlines of continents were remapped. Uh, the Lost Frontiers team mapped the Doggerland region, which is about the size of the Netherlands. Uh, the team could identify the location of river valleys, marshlands, yeah, yeah, uh, unable to find evidence of human activity, which once they start getting core sediments and stuff, they might very well find a bunch of stuff. Because um, again, they're although they've been spending the better part of 15 years at, with laser-focused um, efforts in getting as much as they can, they still haven't found uh, hard evidence of human activity uh, aside from those tools and and uh, weapons. But that's not really evidence of activity. Uh, his focus was on the period between 11,000 to 5,000 BC. The Middle Stone Age, what was the last great period of the hunter-gatherer, vast areas in the North Sea were dry land and inhabited, for sure inhabited. The most pleasant places to live would have been on the Great Plains, which are now at sea. Um, they would have wanted to be there and not in the hills. Um, and then they started going into um, some of the uh, fishermen in the past hundred years or so that found stuff. Um, there is a sand ridge east of Great Yarmouth, known as the Brown Bank, which could have been the location of a settlement. So yeah, they're starting to profile the land to see uh, what could have been a prime candidate for uh, a settlement. The project hoped to reveal for the first time the culture and lifestyle of the prehistoric Britons who flourished there for 6,000 years. And yeah, a lot is, are made about the prehistoric Britons. I've done a bunch of um, videos about that. Um, and then about how there's a sudden uh, influx of DNA that came uh, from the Mediterranean, uh, supposedly, into the area. But before then, the population there has always been a mystery. And this definitely could shed light, shed light on that. Because essentially you have all this land that's been more or less preserved to a certain extent. Uh, um, so much so that we still find their tools from back then. So... If we find a bone or something, then anything that in which we can sequence some, some amount of surviving DNA, then that would be huge to shed light on the mysterious uh, prehistoric Britons. 
Uh, it's understood ancient civilization originally covered about 260,000 square miles. Uh, square kilometers or 100,000 square miles. However, after the Ice Age ended, coastal zones became increasingly vulnerable. Yeah, so um, let me know what you guys think about this, about Doggerland. I think it's super fascinating. I think anything underwater is fascinating because, again, it's literally a time capsule that we, we can use to uh, learn more about what happened in the past and what we could possibly expect in the future in terms of climate shifts and, and catastrophes and stuff like that. And... Um, it, it, and also, it might put s certain surviving historical documents into perspective uh, if we understand the more about the po the prehistoric populations living in the area. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about Targaland. If there's anything else, any like local legends or anything about it that I, I haven't talked about or I haven't I, I'm not aware of, let me know in the comments. And if you guys have a link, send me a link too. That's always cool. And I'll talk to you guys later.